Nobel Prize winning economists are backing Vice President Kamala Harris's vision for the economy, calling it vastly superior to the plans laid out by former President Donald Trump. 23 U.S. recipients of the prestigious award have signed a letter serving as a stamp of approval for Harris's economic agenda. According to the group, the vice president's agenda will improve the overall health of the economy, while Trump's policies will greatly increase tariffs, something he seems to be obsessed with. Joining us now from the Southwest Wall, <laughs> former wow. Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst, Steve Ratner. Steve, take us through this. Yeah, I mean, well, you saw the Nobel Prize announcement uh, uh, by The Economist, and it's indicative of what economists feel about it. So let me show you one other uh, survey of economists, and then we'll get into the details of why economists feel as strongly as they do. So the Wall Street Journal surveyed 39 economists, uh, and what they found was this, a lot of support for many of Harris's key plans, 74 support for her tax credit of $6,000 for new babies, 59 support for raising the corporate tax cut, 64% for, for capping insulin prices at $35 for everyone, and 46%, roughly 50-50, for uh, capping out-of-pocket spending on prescription drugs. Less support for a couple of other things, but basically very strong support. Contrast that over here with Donald Trump, who got 8% support from economists for making his tax cuts permanent, exactly zero support for his tariffs of 20%, and 5% support for eliminating taxes on Social Security benefits, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. So the dramatic contrast between support for Harris on the one side, no support basically for Trump on the other side from 39 uh, economists from across the board. So, Steve, uh, you can already hear Trump's campaign, Trump yes. supporters saying, oh, these are pointy-headed economists, these are academics, who cares? We can point them, though, to the economists from the Wall Street Journal or Goldman Sachs, who mm, says that Kamala Harris's economy would be better than Donald Trump. So let's move to your second chart uh, about what a Trump plan would actually do to the economy if implemented the way he's pitching it. Yeah, so why are these economists so opposed to Trump's plan? Because the economic effects would be pretty terrible. Uh, this is a study done by Bloomberg uh, Economics, and they found that Harris's plan did not have much change in either the GDP or inflation, which in a sense is a good thing at this point. But look at what Trump's plan would do. Trump's plan would cut the GDP by 8.9%. Hmm. And let me put that in perspective for you. This is roughly twice the amount that the GDP went down during the financial crisis. Wow. So we would be looking at something between a recession and a depression. And interestingly, as we, I'm sure we've, you, people know, because we've talked about this many times, the, the tariffs would, would cause certainly a part of this. But the biggest cause, actually, of this drop are the mass deportations that Trump is talking about, mm -hmm. because he would take huge pieces of our labor force out of the country send them back through or send them somewhere else and the result would be uh, business wouldn't have labor they wouldn't be able to produce things and you'd have this enormous economic contraction so this is this is something we've never seen before wow. uh, in terms of scoring a set of policy proposals from a presidential candidate uh, the other reason why Trump, why Harris seems to be doing better or maybe doing better for her economic thoughts relative to Trump is maybe people are figuring out what's actually in these two plans. And one of the most important things in these two plans are the differences in their tax proposals. Harris's tax proposal would raise incomes for people at the bottom 20 percent, for people in the 20 to 40 percent percentile by fairly significant amounts. She would... Uh, cut as you raise taxes for people at the higher incomes down here in the 99 to 100 and the 95 to 99. Trump does the opposite, does the opposite. He raises after tax incomes for people at the highest incomes up here. And believe it or not, if you're at the bottom, Trump's tax plan would actually increase your taxes uh, slightly. So uh, maybe people are figuring out these kinds of differences and changing their view of her, tech, of her economic plan versus Trump's economic plan.
Well, Steve, that's a good point. We were just talking earlier about a poll this morning that showed that the economic advantage uh, had been taken away from Donald Trump. There was also an AP poll that came out earlier this week that showed the same thing, that it's a, pretty much a statistical tie, even though Harris is ahead on taxes, Harris is ahead on housing costs, Harris is ahead on some things that no one would have believed they would have been ahead a of uh, before Harris Waltz. Um, but, but it's very interesting. There's something else going on here, isn't there? Because when uh, the Biden White House tried to push up Bidenomics, it didn't work. Inflation was still coming down. Gas prices were still coming down. But they, they hadn't gotten to where they are now. I wonder if some of the, the shifts, and it's, it's dramatic shifts unless you look at partisan polls. It's dramatic shifts, uh, like in this AP poll on the economy toward Harris, I wonder if that has to do with the fact that gas prices just keep dropping. Inflation just keeps dropping. The interest rates have dropped. I mean, people are actually seeing it in their day-to-day -day life that some things still cost too much when they go to the grocery store. Some things still cost too much when they go to Home Depot. But after a while, they're comparing it to what it was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And they see that everything's going in the right direction as far as inflation, cost of living, and most importantly, the difference between the cost of living and their living wages going up. Sure, Joe. Yes. Look, we have, as you have pointed out, and actually the cover of The Economist uh, this week uh, calls our economy the envy of the world. We have the most amazing economy and our economic projections and our economic results continue to get better. Growth is faster than people thought. And as you said, inflation has come down almost to the Fed's 2 percent target. Which is really quite, uh, which is really quite extraordinary. And yeah, some things absolutely still cost too much, but it is all moving in the right direction. All right, Steve. Let's move to your third chart about the national debt. Obviously, Donald Trump, as president, racked up massive historic debt for the country. What would it do this time around? So maybe voters are starting to process this as well. Uh, and one of the things that Donald Trump has done, among his more cynical things that he's done, where he's throwing out tax cuts for everybody over time and, and this and that, is uh, cutting taxes on Social Security benefits. And that may sound like something you want to do, but the consequences of it would be pretty terrible because the Social Security Trust Fund, which is already going to run out of money out in 2034, would be decimated by eliminating Social Security taxes from their source of income, and insolvency would come three years earlier, and there would be a huge cost to other taxpayers, presumably, to make up for this gap. So maybe voters are starting to figure that out. And then also is the budget deficit and the debt. And this, again, may be something people are beginning to get aware of. So if you combine Harris's tax proposals together, she would have actually a fairly minimal impact on the debt, $500 billion over 10 years. So that's relatively small in the context of what we got. Trump's tax cuts, even with his, these are his tariffs, by the way, so we know what those would have done. But t Trump's tax cuts, this rather cynical giveaway to everybody and anybody, would add three trillion dollars to the national debt over the next 10 years. So the party that's supposed to be the party of fiscal responsibility turns out to be the party of fiscal irresponsibility. And again, perhaps voters are starting to figure that out. So, Steve, with all that data behind you on the wall, including that eye popping second chart that shows uh, Trump's plan would crater the economy, according to leading economists. Why will you go to, I don't know, a cocktail party or an event of some kind or just be out in the street and talk to your friends who work in the financial world who say, yeah, I'm going with Trump this time? What, what is the rationale as guys who understand the economy so well, who know the Dow is soared above 43,000, who know tariffs are bad for the economy, will lead to inflation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is the argument people who are so smart about money and the economy are making in spite of that data behind you? It's a great question, Willie. The argument is basically, uh, what I hear back from them is basically twofold. One, they don't think Trump's going to do all this stuff. Mm. Uh, he, uh, and, you know, if that's the way you want to vote and you want to guess that the guy who says he's going to do all this stuff isn't going to do all this stuff, then I guess that's one way to approach it. The other thing they say is that he will be uh, uh, he will be good for business that he will cut regulations to the bone he, he will uh, not block mergers the way the biden harris administration has stopped some mergers that were anti-competitive that essentially it'll be uh, free reign uh, in washington for the business community and they'll get whatever they want 
and they'll be able to uh, they'll be able to essentially run their business, merge, do whatever without a lot of government regulation. There is, I have to say, some unhappiness in the business community about regulations in the last four years, and they view Trump as the kind of uh, no pun intended get out of jail card. Uh, for business with uh, in terms of what they'd be able to do under a Trump administration. Yeah, but I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, again, the Dow at record levels, the S&P at record levels, as the Economist article, and, and I talk about all the time, you talk about all the time, the United States economy is the envy of the world. We have a $27 trillion uh, um, GDP to China's $18 trillion GDP. Texas has a bigger GDP than Russia. California has a bigger GDP than India and Canada and Britain and every other country in the world. California, the su supposed socialist state of California, other than three others. I mean, we could go down the list, the dollar over the past four years at 50-year at, at highs, the jobless rate lower, uh, below 4% for longer than any time over the, past, the last 30 years. I could continue on and on. I mean, Amazon has has a higher uh, R&D budget uh, than any G7 country could go on and on. It just never stops. And you look at these individual people on Wall Street, these billionaires. They talk about, oh, well, we need Trump. Trump might be better for us. And Ross Sorkin yesterday talked about one of Trump's biggest fans, who, of course, was against him after January 6th, but I guess changed his tune. Steve Schwartzman was worth $25 billion dollars when Kamala Harris became vice president. He's worth $50 billion today because the economy has exploded so much and the Dow has exploded so much and the S&P has exploded so much. And this is the story of all of these billionaires, Steve. It doesn't make sense. And for you and me, when you talk about the debt, I'm, I'm gravely concerned about the $35 mm -hmm. trillion dollar debt. This has to be addressed. And yet Donald Trump broke all records when he was president for being fiscally reckless. And now, with his proposals, according to economists quoted by the Wall Street Journal, it's going to happen again. Yeah, that, that's the risk, Joe, is that he actually does this stuff this time, and you get these kinds of results. But just to add on to a couple of things you said, because you said it all so well, but for example, uh, on the businessmen, they, they complain about Harris, but yet if you look at business investment in this country, it's off the charts high. Why is it off the charts high? Confidence in America, our strong economy, but also, ironically, some of the Biden-Harris policies, like the Inflation Reduction Act, which has spurred this extraordinary uh, uh, upsurge in investment in renewable energy and all kinds of things for the new economy. I was in Silicon Valley last week, and we are the center of artificial intelligence research and development in the world. There's nobody else who's even close. And the dynamism out there and the excitement about that is really quite breathtaking. And so, yes, this is, this is an extraordinary economy, and it has made a lot of people very, very, very wealthy. And I, I think, I personally obviously think it's a better bet than going down this rabbit hole and potentially having 10 or 20 percent tariffs and a disastrous economy. All right. Morning, Joe. Economic analyst Steve Ratner, thank you. As always, we appreciate your insight.